it's another day. That means there's another AI announcement. And today it is Adobe. Adobe is entering the AI art generation game in a big way with a product called Firefly. This is a standalone tool that's slowly going to be infusing itself into all the creation tools you know and love, like Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects. I've had early access for the last couple weeks, so let me show you what you can do with this tool and also how Adobe is approaching AI art generation differently on two key fronts. Number one, the data that they use to make this model, far more ethical, I will say, and number two, the user experience itself. It actually feels like this was made for designers and creators. Let's get right into it. All right, so for starters, Firefly isn't just one thing. Once you get access to the tool, you'll notice a bunch of different modules here. Firefly is almost like a hub for them to showcase a variety of different AI models, get hands-on feedback from creators, and then their intention is that these models will make their way into products like Photoshop and After Effects in the future. So for now, we've got access to text to image, text effects, which is already very cool. And very shortly, they're gonna have a bunch of different vector generation options. Let's start with text to image. If you've used any text to image product out there like Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, Dolly 2, so on and so forth, at first glance, Firefly will look very familiar. But there's a bunch of unique differences here in how Adobe approached the product experience. Let's dig into that. So I pasted in an awesome prompt here and you get your four image generations. You can rate them, you can save them out, but on the right side is where there's some really interesting stuff happening. So how Adobe is approaching prompting is that you can type in a text description of the contents of your scene or your generation. And then when it comes to things like content type, stylistic preferences, and even nuanced detail like tonality, lighting and composition, you can layer those on on top of it. So Adobe is using a diffusion-based model here, not GigaGAN, which we all thought previously. So needless to say, you can get some really photorealistic results like you're seeing over here. What's also cool is that Adobe trained this model using Adobe Stock. So they have rock solid data provenance for all the imagery that was used to create this AI art generator. And this is crucial because Adobe is one of the leading creation tools companies and they cannot afford to alienate creators. So they have elected to not train models on Behance imagery. Despite that being quite a treasure trove, if you just think about like the text to UI design models you could train off of that corpus, it's fantastic but they're taking a far more responsible approach and sticking to Adobe stock. This also means that you can feel comfortable when you're using this product for commercial purposes. But there are some noticeable downsides to this Adobe stock approach. For example, if you wanna generate muscle cars, there aren't enough photos of muscle cars on Adobe stock just yet. So you'll get subpar results for certain entities, right? I think this creates an interesting opportunity for creators to curate these type of data sets and license them to bigger companies like Adobe. And it could be a huge monetization opportunity. The other AI model accessible right now is text effects. And this is really awesome, right? Because to achieve similar effects with Stable Diffusion, for example, you really had to use things like control nets. Like image to image just wasn't enough. And that suddenly adds a bunch of different steps to the process. Their user experience is quite simple. So let's say I wanna do Billy FX. You simply type in the text that you're looking for and then describe the text effect you want. So let's say I want quantum computing and microchips. I just hit enter. Adobe's really abstracting away a lot of the complexity here because like I can change the different types of fonts over here. Let's say I want something that is perhaps the Homa. I like that. Actually, I like Source Sans. And then you can change different background preferences and you get a bunch of different variations here on the bottom. But here you go with an alpha channel, really immaculate detail. I could use this right out of the box. Now let's go ahead and download this and talk about another key position that Adobe is taking. They really want to promote transparency in AI. And this is important, right? Like by the end of the year, we're really just not even going to know what is AI generated or not. So right now they do two things. One is they embed metadata that specifies that this was generated with AI. And number two, they put a watermark in. And the watermark is probably just for the beta period because they're not allowing you to use it for commercial purposes during this period itself, but that is obviously their goal. So if you're making a birthday video or New Year's video, everyone loves those like trendy balloon effects. You can make those like fairly effortlessly. You can imagine how this is going to be absolutely amazing 
baked right into Photoshop and Illustrator. No longer do we need to wrangle a bunch of layer effects to achieve something similar. Type in your intention and boom, there it is in context with the rest of your creation. That's where the magic's gonna start happening when these capabilities graduate to other tools. So I think this user experience just shows that like a creation tools company made this for creators, right? Versus engineers or like a research company making this for really engineers, even though they think they're making it for creators. So I love the direction that this user experience is going. And practically, here's another example. So let's say I like the overall result of this generation. And I wanna try a slightly different aesthetic, right? Low lighting, shot from below, cool tone. I dial that look in and it's amazing. And let's say I wanna go back to something more photorealistic. I remove a couple of the tags and I'm back to something like this. It's absolutely phenomenal how easy it is to iterate and refine your creation versus like prompting to no end and playing around with prompt weights and all this other madness that we've almost gotten used to as more technical creators. I think this is gonna make AR generation way more accessible and honestly useful. I also had to try some like more complicated prompts. So I tried like the classic Rick and Morty robot that toasts your bread and applies butter to it. And the results are pretty phenomenal. Like I'm impressed with all of these images. They all look really, really good and fairly coherent. So you're probably wondering how do hands look? Well, I'm happy to report that they look quite, quite spectacular. I tried a pretty complicated prompt here, as you can see, and the results are fairly coherent. I'm not seeing any like six or seven hands anywhere. It's interesting that it doubles up on the cup, but that's besides the point. Hands look fairly freaking decent. So there you have it. Uh, Eric Snowden, the VP of design over at uh, Adobe made this awesome analogy in one of the early access sessions about like Adobe's got decades of creation capabilities, right? Some using computer vision, some using machine learning, some just classical good old fashioned computer graphics. They can take that entire pantry of capabilities and now start combining it with all these new diffusion based models or even the GigaGAN stuff that they talked about and start creating amazing recipes. All right, so that about wraps it up for today. We talked about Adobe Firefly, Adobe's entry into the rather crowded AI art generation market, but they've got some differentiated approaches here. And once they start plugging this stuff into the creation tools we all know and love, I think it'll be a huge, huge game changer for all of us. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. It really does help. Most importantly, tell me, what do you think about Adobe's entry? Do you like the fact that they're only training their models off of Adobe stock? Will that assuage the AI naysayer, so to speak? And what would you like to see happen, right? If Adobe's got all this cool stuff right now, what other models would you like to see? And how would you like to see these things integrated into the Adobe tools you use on a daily basis? Drop those thoughts in the comment below. And if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing to the Creative Technology Digest. That's really where I dissect in detail everything that's happening at the intersection of creativity, technology, and even a little bit of internet culture. With that, Bilaval Sidhu is signing off, and I will see y'all in the next one.